So what exactly does MySQL compatible mean? And why is this important? For decades, companies have been making business decisions based on traditional relational enterprise data, such as transactions. Then big data came into the picture. Along with the arrival of big data came massive volumes of both structured and unstructured data that's so large it's difficult to process using traditional database and software techniques. In fact, there's way more unstructured data in the world than structured. The volume is too big, it comes from many different sources and in many different formats, it moves too fast, and it normally exceeds processing capabilities available on premises. But this data, when captured, formatted, manipulated, and stored, pulls powerful insights, some never before imagined, through analytics. That last V, the ability to derive value from all data, no matter what format, is a differentiating factor between businesses that can mitigate risk and respond to customer actions in near real time versus companies that will fall behind in the day and age of data deluge. Today, there are many types of data producers, meaning what produces data. A very short list of data producers is shown on this slide in each header with a very short list of examples of things that produce that type of data listed below each header. The first column gives you examples of machine and sensor data, such as the Internet of Things or IoT, satellites, road, air, and sea patterns, and scientific monitoring. The next column gives you examples of video and image data, such as video surveillance, internet gaming, and streaming video sites such as Netflix. The next column shows examples of social data, such as tweets, comments, relationships, posts, likes, and sites like Skype. The next column shows examples of internet data, such as data from websites, news sites, online banking, and package tracking. The next column shows examples of log data, such as event logs, transaction logs, network logs, and security logs. And the last column gives examples of third-party data, such as geospatial data, demographic data, and content delivery networks. MySQL can handle many of these types of unstructured data, where traditional relational database management systems can't. It has been estimated by EMC Digital Universe that the amount of data we create and copy annually will reach 44 zettabytes or 44 trillion gigabytes by the year 2020. That's a lot of data in many different formats. It's important to use the right database for the right kind of data to get the right analytical value that you need. I've highlighted some differences between Amazon Aurora and Amazon Relational Database Service for MySQL. If you'd like a comprehensive comparison, visit the link at the bottom of the slide. For read scaling, Amazon Aurora supports up to 15 replicas with little impact on write performance. On the other hand, Amazon RDS for MySQL supports up to 5 replicas and has an impact on write performance. For failover target, Amazon Aurora has automatic failover with no data loss, while replicas for Amazon RDS for MySQL can be manually promoted to the master database instance, but with potential data loss. Amazon Aurora only supports the InnoDB storage engine. The reason for this is so that your existing MySQL applications and tools that use MySQL today can run in Amazon Aurora without any modification. The way InnoDB storage works is in line with Amazon Aurora's unique architecture. If the MyISAM storage engine is used, MySQL doesn't comply with the full SQL standard for some of Amazon Aurora's implemented functionalities. This concludes section 1.4, what exactly does MySQL compatible mean? 
And why is this important? Coming up next is section 1.5, Amazon Aurora's High Performance Overview. In this section, I'll touch on some of Amazon Aurora's high performance features and will further elaborate on this topic in a subsequent video. I'd love to say the quote on this slide is mine, but I actually stole it from somewhere. Performance only matters if your database is up. Amazon Aurora's High Performance Overview Amazon Aurora has five times the throughput of standard MySQL running on the same hardware. Throughput is comparable to enterprise commercial databases at one-tenth the cost without license constraints. Amazon Aurora can achieve up to 500,000 reads and 100,000 writes per second on the largest Amazon Aurora instance. You can perform 6 million inserts per minute and 30 million selects per minute. This can be further scaled for read operations using read replicas that have less than 10 millisecond latency to serve high volume application read traffic from multiple instances, which increases the aggregate throughput. Read replicas share the underlying storage as the source instance, lowering costs and avoiding writes at the replica nodes. This frees up processing power to serve read requests, often lowering lag time down to a single digit millisecond. You can create up to 15 read replicas per Amazon Aurora cluster. Jeff Barr, Chief Evangelist at Amazon Web Services, has an amazing blog that somehow he's able to keep everyone abreast of all the changes made in Amazon Web Services. I encourage you to visit it often. The blog URL is at the bottom left of this slide. On September 2nd, 2016, Jeff came out with a new blog post. The URL for that post is on the bottom right of this screen. Jeff wrote, and I quote, with MySQL compatibility on top of the unique cloud-native Aurora architecture underneath, we have a lot of room to innovate. Jeff announced three performance improvements in this blog post, each one aimed at making Aurora more performant on a wide variety of workloads commonly run by AWS customers. The first one is parallel read-ahead, range selects, full table scans, table alterations, and index generation are now up to five times faster. This has to do with how the InnoDB storage engine organizes table rows and the underlying storage, the disk page, using index keys for scanning. The parallel prefetch helps ensure the pages in the database cache are relevant to the scan operation. The other improvement is faster index build generation of indexes is now about 75% faster. This has to do with changing the structure of the index keys in the storage engine from a typical top-down tree structure to a tree structure that is built in a bottom-up fashion, reducing the amount of back and forth to storage and more. And the third feature announced is NUMA Aware Scheduling. When Amazon Aurora runs on instances, with more than one CPU chip, reads from the query cache and the buffer cache are faster, improving overall throughput by up to 10%. The largest DB instance, DBR38X Large, has two CPU chips and a feature known as NUMA, which stands for Non-Uniform Memory Access. On these systems, it used to be that an equal fraction of main memory is directly and efficiently accessible to each CPU. The remaining memory is accessible via a somewhat less efficient cross-CPU access path. Aurora now has improved scheduling of threads across CPUs to take advantage of disparity in access times, no longer needing to fight against each other for access to the less efficient memory attached to the other CPU. With the frequent feature updates to Amazon Aurora, more updates have happened since what was mentioned in the last slide. The URL to this new blog post 
is updated and still on the bottom right of this slide. On September 8, 2016, Jeff announced that as an extension to Amazon Aurora's existing read replica model, AWS is introducing a new cluster level read endpoint. Your application can still read queries to individual replicas like before, but you can now also update it to make use of the new endpoint, giving two important advantages. Number one, Connecting to the cluster endpoint allows Aurora to load balance connections across the replicas in the database cluster. This helps to spread the workload around and can lead to better performance and more equitable use of the resources available to each replica. In the event of a failover, if the replica that you are connected to is promoted to the primary instance, the connection will be dropped. You then can reconnect to the reader endpoint in order to send your read queries to the other replicas in the cluster. The other feature is you can place multiple Aurora replicas in distinct availability zones and connect them via the new endpoint. In the unlikely event that an availability zone fails, applications that make use of the new endpoint will continue to send read traffic to the other replicas with minimal disruption. You can see the reader endpoint in the screenshot highlighted in orange. In this high-level view of Amazon Aurora's architecture, you're looking at a service-oriented architecture applied to a database engine. When Andy Jassy challenged his data team to recreate the relational database in a world where AWS exists, they built it just like developers code in a service-oriented decoupled architecture. Looking on the left side of the diagram, you'll see in the data plane section that the database engine is tightly integrated with the SSD-based new virtual storage layer, reducing write to the storage system, minimizing lock contention, and eliminating delays created by database processing threads. Jassy's team took about half of the database out of the process, the logging and storage. The logging and storage layer is scalable, multi-tenant, and optimized for database workloads. Caching is outside the database process as well, as you'll notice in the green rectangle that includes caching with logging and storage. By doing this, cache remains warm in the event of a database restart. It lets you resume fully loaded operations much faster. On the lower left side, you'll see there's automatic continual, and incremental backups to Amazon S3. Amazon S3 has the 11 nines for high durability, 99.9 more nines, which is definitely highly durable. On the right side of this image, you'll see that the team integrated this new architecture with some of the premier Amazon services for control plane operations, where forwarding and routing decisions are made, such as DynamoDB, Simple Workflow Service, and Route 53. This concludes Section 1.5, Amazon Aurora's High Performance Overview. Coming up next is Section 1.6, Amazon Aurora's Scalability Overview.